Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got a new variation of these sextortion scams now. The way they usually work is that you will receive an email claiming that someone has a video of you watching pornographic movies. Now, then they expect you to pay them in Bitcoin in order to not release this material to your friends. What has changed today is that these emails also include a username and a password of yours. Now, these are authentic username password pairs likely retrieved from one of the many password dumps that have been released over the last month and years. So this is supposed to make the email more plausible. Haven't really figured out if any victims have paid yet. It looks like all of these emails use different Bitcoin addresses. Brian Krebs today also report about it. His email looks exactly like the one that we received, but with a different Bitcoin address. And then we have yet another problem with NPM modules getting compromised. This time it's a part of the ESLint module. ESLint is mostly used by developers in order to check JavaScript code for bugs, but that's really who was targeted here. Apparently one developer's credentials were compromised for ESLint. These credentials were then used to push an update out that included additional code that stole NPM credentials. So developers that used this code were at risk of having their credentials stolen. Now, unlike with some of these earlier NPM issues, this time the problem was discovered very quickly, actually as soon as the token was issued for this particular developers. Other developers on the ESLint project noticed that that's probably not right and investigated. So the malicious code was really only available for a few hours. As a precaution, all tokens created during that window have been invalidated, so there shouldn't be any more fallout of this. And the developer who had the credentials stolen is now using two-factor authentication according to a comment on the bug report. And Circle, the Luxembourg Computer Incident Response Center, came out with a nice IMAP proxy written in Python that will help you clean up attachments. Now, the checks they're performing are less signature based. Instead, they're just checking for sort of known bad patterns in attachments, making sure they're all well formed. They're supporting a relatively large list of attachment types. I think it was about a year ago when Circle came out with a little Raspberry Pi install that you can use to clean up USB sticks that uses the same library. And now with this IMAP proxy, you can essentially transparently filter all email that you are downloading via IMAP. Supports a TLS and instead of outright deleting anything that it considers malicious, it will just quarantine respective files. I think one potential use case here is if you do have users that connect to third-party IMAP servers that you don't control, so you can't do filtering like this uh, on the server itself, then having a proxy like this is certainly quite handy. Of course, this won't do anything for any emails retrieved via webmail. Now, Checkpoint took a look at what's going on with banking malware recently. We haven't really seen a lot of this. It's all crypto ransomware or crypto miners uh, these days. But yes, banking malware is still out there. And according to Checkpoint, the malware that's really out there is actually quite old. Ramnet, Dorkbot, and Seuss are the top three families that they're seeing. And yes, you know, they're going sort of on six to 10 years that they have been first cited. Which sort of confirms what uh, we have been seeing that banking malware isn't really as actively developed anymore as it used to. And the effort now is really focusing on particular crypto jacking. 
Well, uh, that's it for today. Next week, of course, Sands Fire our annual big conference in Washington DC. And as usual, we'll have a number of our handlers there. Xavier, Didier, Boyan uh, will be there and a few others. We'll have our big panel on Monday. I'll be around of course as well. So if you want stickers or so, I usually carry some with me. Just uh, let me know or just come to the panel on Monday if you're attending the conference. We'll also have Mark's crypto collection available again. I think he added a couple new systems and this is not crypto coins. This is good old fashioned crypto like Enigma machines. He has one that he'll hopefully bring. So hope to see some of you on Monday or well, uh, the rest of the week. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.